Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Yes, a comparison between Press Start and Press Start 2. I don't know, I'm always bad with this whole direction thing, so maybe I should be holding them like this so you read them, but yeah, basically just watched Press Start 2 a couple of days ago. Really loved it, and yes, I will be spoiling both of them this video. I This is not really a review of either of them, and I would point out that basically, you know, the bottom line is I love both movies. The second one is definitely superior when it comes to technical aspects. And yeah, that, you know, regardless of what I say in this video, I do love the second one. If I had to choose, I might prefer the first one though. And yeah, I'm gonna try to explain why. Basically, what I really like about the first one is that it really feels like a video game. You know, it's it's very quest-driven and it has this sort of... It has video game logic scattered all across it. You know, and several times, you know, people bring attention to the video game logic. Other times, it's just there, you know, but I didn't feel there was as much of that in the second one. And... Again, that's not, you know, the second one, excuse me, is still a lot of fun. Excuse me, and the jokes, excuse me, are really good. But that was what I really loved about the first one. And I also maybe say that in some ways the second one is more of a movie where the first one was... I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know, the, the first one... Or maybe like a better kind of movie than the first one was, where the first one is kind of a maybe a basic kind of movie, a very an easy to make kind of movie. Structurally, it's very simple. Basically, you know, you have a couple of people together, you know, doing the same thing, and you know, along the way there are some disagreements, and. As they progress, they, you know, they get closer to the thing they have to do, and at the end, they do it. And, yeah, you know, I think it says a bit about the two movies that the first movie, only at the very end do they get to Vile's lair. You know, they spend 20 minutes, maybe, at Vile's lair. In the second one, they're in his building for the entire movie. You know, basically all four of our heroes spend nearly 80 minutes inside Vile's building. The the V Corporation, you know, and it just, it, it has a different feel to it. I, I'd also say maybe the first one is more focused on the plot, where the second one is more focused on the characters, you know, the first has sort of more, like, details about this is what Vile has done, you know, and, yeah, basically, you know, they're, they're going around saying, well, this used to be that, this used to be that, and I think maybe that also kind of makes the first one get more away with the not as much low budget as no budget kind of thing because in the second one I don't know it I didn't feel as much of a reason there I, I didn't sense as much of a reason there for us not seeing you know grand spectacular things or at least more which you know we did see some pretty some really cool things in the second one as well as the first one but in the second one the effects tended to be better but it, yeah, I, you know, in the first one, they were talking about, well, you know, you should be seeing more here, but Vile is the reason it's gone now. And it also, I don't know, it gave a kind of sense of urgency, and, you know, they, they really have to be able to do this. When the second one, 
I don't know, it's just, it's it's him again and he does, you know, kind of the reason that we know that Vile is dangerous in the second one is because he was in the first one. It, it was established in the first one. You know, the second movie would have had to be completely different if it was the first that people saw. You know, or at least the first movie that people saw, even if the show could fill stuff in it. But, but yeah. You know, anyway, first one, more about plot. You know, I went into that, so second one more about characters. In the first one, we really only have, you know, what's his name? Something Psycho Drive, who's now named G. Foreman. In the second one, you know, they've got the the dude with the gas mask. They've got the succubus. I am really bad at names right now. You know, they've got Scarth Karoth. It, they've got the... I don't know what the joke is with him, really. The, the knockoff of Jason Voorhees, I guess. It, maybe it's from some game. It, yeah, that actually brings me nicely into the next thing. I got more jokes in the first one than the second one. You know, I, I get what they're making fun of in the second one, but it's I haven't paid that much attention to the console wars. It really didn't, you know, I have a Wii, I have no interest in owning either of the others. That's really the end of it for me. I don't need to know anything about the other two, basically. I, I don't like playing video games with a joystick unless it's maybe a car game or a fighting game. And even with a fighting game, I sometimes prefer what the Wii can do with it, you know. But yeah, so I got that and the, the Giacomo... You know, they went into that more, and I get it, it's like Pokemon. I have no interest in Pokemon, not even a little bit. It just never, you know, never had that phase. Nothing. It Anime in general really doesn't speak to me, you know, much at all. So, yeah. Which is not to say, you know, I don't have a problem with it. It's just really not for me. You know, the one anime thing that I kind of enjoy is Death Note, which, you know, I like that, but there's a lot, you know, if given, like, editorial rights on that, I would, yeah, I would cut it to shreds. There is a lot that I would take out that, to me, feels like filler, but I'm sure the Japanese have a reason for putting it in there. Sometimes I even understand the reason, but disagree with it. Anyway, yeah, I, I just didn't, a lot of that, and, and the whole thing with the phone and the little things, I got the whole, you know, oh, you can combine them and do that sort of thing. That I get from, you know, games I've played, maybe specifically Subterra Core, but I didn't really get, I guess it's from girl-oriented games or something, and, you know, that's fine. I'm, I'm glad they're, you know, doing that as well. It, I'm sure it's a market, but yeah, you know, when when it's when it comes to the first one, you've got Mortal Kombat references. I don't even play. I'm not even a fan of Mortal Kombat, but I know all that stuff. You know, I do like that they did a babality in the second one. That was pretty cool. But but yeah, you know, you've got Mortal Kombat references. You've got the Dead or Alive series. You know, you've got this kind of... Oh yeah, I guess there's Zelda references in both... Yeah, there's Zelda references in both of them. But yeah, that kind of thing... The first one felt like it could have been a Zelda, you know, kind of thing. Or at least a, a role-playing adventure, really. And I'm not even a fan of those, but I, I've i played a little bit and I get what it is. You know, I get the little, you know, illogical things of it, you know. The second one, it feels like when they do, you know, actually, yeah, that was also on about the the logic, the video game logic. In the second one, the video game logic, there's some with the, you know, all the hallways they go down, and then there are, like, guards, and all the guards, of course, have to be taken out, and the guards are really stupid, you know, they're tricked by a big box, you know, they're 
you know, they, they don't investigate properly, and they never notice that their buddies are gone, all this type of stuff, you know. I like that, but I, I don't think it supports a full movie. I would maybe just have preferred like a short of that. However, they don't spend the entire movie on that, so it's not, you know, and the second movie is shorter. So it doesn't get to be excessive, but I do think the, th the first one, it was just, you know, it, it really felt like this quest RPG adventure kind of game and for the entire thing you know there wasn't a lot in it that was really out of place for that and in the second one you know part of the way it is this spy having to sneak sort of thing and yeah and and that was fine but other than that yeah, I don't know. But, but yeah, with the first one, it just felt like everything, mostly everything, was really, really fit into this sort of, you know, that that, that was what they were parodying. And the second one, I don't know, I don't know if I'm making myself very clear on this particular point. The end battles, don't get me wrong, I love the end battles. The second one. It was hilarious and really creative and being a big fan of the Wii, I of course loved the Wii mode stuff, you know, with the basically technology driven, slightly magical telekinesis that he had, you know, and then he uses the pointer to draw monsters and it's the stick figure BS that we've seen from Vile all along, you know, that was great. But the final battle in the first one really feels like a final battle in a video game. You know, he's, you know, he's duplicating himself. And it's this kind of thing where, ooh, which is, which one is the right one? And, you know, yeah, just the whole thing really felt like, and, and that they had to rescue a, you know, the, the girlfriend of the hero. You know, just the whole thing. Yes, it's cliche, but it's a really, you know, that's kind of what you have to do in a parody. You bring out the cliches and make fun of them. You know, and with the second one... I don't know. It... It didn't so much follow the formula, and... It, it didn't feel as much like a video game. And... Thus, I, I would have to say, overall, I do slightly prefer the first one, but they are both great. There was one other thing... which seems to have completely escaped me. Yes, I wanted to again... I believe I said in the review as well, but just really point out in the second one it was fantastic that they brought in Vlad you know this kind of you know because you in both movies you have these conversations between Vile and Johnson and they are some of the funniest stuff and just in general you know Vile's you know Vile needs someone else near him he needs someone to bounce off of sort of you know, he needs to be talking to someone so that that can be, you know, kind of the joke. Because Vile is freaking hilarious. He is one of the funniest characters in this entire franchise, you know. Even with the series, with its vast array of characters, Vile is just... You, you can't get enough of the guy. The sorcerer. The undead sorcerer. Yeah, something like that. He's just hilarious, and having him, you know, with this right-hand man of his going over the things, that's really fun. And when you bring in Vlad, you get that, you know, further, you know, you add that to the dynamic. It gets really fun, and, you know, and that was also something... 
with a sequel, you can't really just do exactly the same thing. You certainly shouldn't. Almost regardless of what it is a sequel to. So with that, you know, they add that extra little ingre ingredient, you know. I don't wish that Vlad had been on screen in the first movie like he is in the second one. I'm just glad they did it this way. If they make a third one, I have no idea what they're going to do with that because it really... I, I don't think they could really bring in... And just none of the others are really as interesting, you know. Yeah, so... But that was fantastic. Vlad is hilarious to, you know in in that sort of just the the deadpan and the I am so tired of this villainy stuff kind of attitude and his conversations with vile just fantastic please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it